Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Natasha. And for my senior project, I made and donated fabric face masks out of reused and upcycled fabrics. Um, so this was not my original senior project. Over the summer, I was doing something that really only benefited myself and my family. And with COVID going on and just all of the injustice that was happening in our country and how hectic everything was, I really wanted to do something that wouldn't just benefit myself, but would benefit people in need. And so I begged Mr. Lytle, who was my mentor at the time, to please let me switch. And this was in like late July, early August, and somehow I was allowed to switch. Um, so I also was like, I really want to start making my own clothes. I thought that, that would be so cool. Now, I do not want to. Um, <laughs> I now realize that I absolutely hate sewing, so that's really great. Um, so I saved up to buy my own sewing machine, and I was so excited. So right after, I went to Goodwill, and I bought a bunch of old men's button-up dress shirts that were the right fabric to make these masks. Um, and so I started practicing my sewing skills because I hadn't sewn since eighth grade handwork class when we made pajamas. And for some reason, I still thought that I would be a pro, and I was definitely not. Um, so yeah, I got to practicing. It did not go well. So in the first few months, I really focused on the business aspect of my project. Um, so I made this logo, and this was my brand name, For Better. Um, and I chose five different organizations that I wanted to donate to. So my original idea was that I would make these masks, sell them, and then donate the proceeds to different charities or organizations. Um, so yeah, this is the logo that I came up with. And so the first um, organization that I was donating to was Black Lives Matter. And so at the beginning, I was making masks. They were not good. Um, so I wasn't really ready to sell them yet, but I was selling them to some family members. So I, um, <laughs> so with the money I made from that, I donated to Black Lives Matter because this was just the original one that I really wanted to focus on and then add more organizations throughout the year. Um, so I did actually make over $100 that I donated to Black Lives Matter. But then my project sort of took a turn. My sewing skills were still so very bad. Um, but before I talk about that, I just wanted to let you know about some of the other organizations that I chose. Um, the Surf Rider Foundation is a California-based organization that works to clean beaches, take plastic out of the ocean. Really awesome. Um, project Hope, which at the time was doing a lot of work in Yemen with the COVID crisis there. Um, and then Feeding America, which helps families have cleaner food and just food in general. Um, and then the Defenders of Wildlife, which helps endangered animals. Um, so yeah, all things that I was pretty passionate about. Um, so going back to the sewing part of this, I, um, decided to be very unnecessarily stubborn. And I was like, I don't need to watch a tutorial or even do research on how to make a mask. I'm just gonna figure it all out by myself, which was probably the worst decision I made in this project. Because for a solid three months, I could not figure out how to sew a mask. I thought that it was gonna be a lot easier than it was. Um, so I have some masks that I'll pass around in a little bit um, to show you that they're just not, not good. I could not figure it out. So then I finally, like three months later, did research on how to actually make a mask and have patterns. And so I finally did that and I could finally sort of make masks. They're still not great, but I could at least sort of make them. And so I started, again, more promotional stuff. I was gonna make a business or no, I was gonna make a website, um, which I didn't get to because I ended up switching my project a little bit again. But I did make an Instagram, but besides the sewing, 
the second hardest thing about my project was promoting myself. I am very, okay, so asking for help is very challenging for me. So I had a very hard time asking my friends who already have so many masks to buy my masks. Um, so I had a very difficult time promoting myself. So I just wasn't really making masks. And so I talked to my lovely mentor, Ms. Welch, and she had the brilliant idea just to donate my masks to charities around Maine. Um, and I was like, duh, why did I not think of that in the first place? My friends don't really need any more masks. Um, so I'll show you some of the challenges that I would regularly have with my sewing machine and my masks. Um, just for reference, these pictures were taken about a week ago. <laughs> when <laughs> when Miss Welch reminded me that I needed pictures for my presentation. So this was not when I was really struggling. Um, this was a constant. <laughs> it was really unfortunate. <laughs> so um, I finally got into the hang of it. I was still having a lot of issues. Turns out I was threading the bobbin wrong this entire time. Um, so she just, Ms. Welch just kept reminding me to keep cutting out my fabric when I was having issues. So I just kept doing that. I worked really hard to make as many masks as I could because there was a time when a lot of this was going on that I just felt very defeated and like I was sort of failing at my senior project and how, and like I just didn't have any way to fix it. And so I ended up making a lot of masks that I was actually really proud of. Um, and so the first place that I reached out to was Maine Needs which is a Portland-based nonprofit um, that, yeah, they were really awesome. And so I reached out to them and just said, I'm making masks, can I donate some to you? And they were so nice right off the bat. So I went actually with Kai, we went together, and um, right as we walked through the door, they knew exactly who I was, which I don't know how. Um, but they were so excited, they were so nice. They right off the bat offered to just give us a tour around their whole facility. So we got to see where they keep all of their food and all the children's clothes and the children's games. And they showed us all the packages that they had set up that day that my masks were going into, which was so awesome. And I actually finally felt like I was making a difference and doing something right. Because for so long, I was just so frustrated with my senior project. And so that was like the best feeling I had throughout this whole process. Um, and additionally, thanks to Kira, I was having some difficulties, but I haven't yet, but I'm going to in the next few weeks donate even more masks to Preble Street, which I'm sure all of you know what that is. Um, I have somewhat of a connection through, to Preble Street through my job already. And so that was one that I really wanted to donate to. They also had a really bad COVID outbreak a few months ago. Um, so yeah, this is my classmates modeling some of the shirts that I turned into masks. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm really proud of the work that I did end up doing. Um, it was definitely very hard for a while. I learned a lot about myself and how I do under pressure. So yeah, but I'm very proud of how many masks I did end up making and donating. If anyone would like to buy it, it is for sale. <laughs> I FaceTimed Olivia Labory. <laughs> she helped me. Um, Ms. Welch helped me. I realized I was threading the bobbin wrong the whole time. Um, that helped me. Or I would just give up for the day and try again the next day. I think I made 90 masks overall. I donated 80. I think I sold about 10 of them. Actually, no, I made a lot. I made more than that because I made, there were a lot of scraps. Not great masks.
Yeah, I did. It was just one that I found online. I'm not exactly sure. It was a while ago. Um, yeah, but I did end up following a pattern. I had um, men's sizes, women's sizes, and children's sizes. So that was very helpful. Um, I learned that I should be less stubborn and that it is okay to ask for help sometimes. Um, and then I also learned that I just hate sewing. They have ice in their veins. Sorry? It's, <laughs> um, it's just a new trend that the teenagers are doing. <laughs> Oh, yes. Sorry, I totally forgot. Um, is it good to do it now? Or? Yeah, you're flat, please. Okay, so, um, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, another thing that I wanted to do was some embroidery on my masks, which I was trying to do. So I have an example of that. Um, so these, they're all clean, by the way. Um, these are some of the first masks that I made that were not good. If you want to just pass those around, you're more than welcome. And then I have um, this other one that had some embroidery that it was just, I didn't put it in the right place. So I didn't sell it or give it away. Um, and then these two, like you saw in the picture, are sort of finalized masks. This is one that I would have donated. I just made it this afternoon after school because I wanted to show one that was actually good. And this was just the first one that I did with um, the pattern. And it was just, this fabric was pretty thin. So I didn't end up giving it away. But yeah, these are sort of my more recent sewing accomplishments. <laughs> Um, I just really didn't feel a need to go buy new fabrics and I also wanted this project to not do any harm to the earth. I didn't want to add to the carbon footprint and I just wanted, I just thought that it would be a fun little challenge 